Well, we're interested in finding out about preparing yourself and your application for this process. So share with us a little bit about how you prepared your application. And if you can remember as early, you know, I don't know, was it as early as D1, D2 year? Just tell us a little bit about if you can recall how far back you went to really start getting things together for your for your application. Um, probably the summer, right? Going in before D one year. Cause I knew I wanted to specialize going in, um, when I was doing the interviews, even for dental school. So what I did was I kind of researched what kind of GPA I needed, what class rank, what, what were schools interested in my before D one year. So I could set myself up starting that first semester in the fall to be in the right place. So I knew what, um, where I needed to be like for class rank wise in the top 20% GPA that you needed research was important. So making sure I would, could get onto a research, uh, pro like, uh, study that I wanted to do. And then also like leadership and getting into, um, leadership positions with, as a student and volunteering. So all those kind of things. So I could plan things out is what I did. And, um, and that's kind of what I followed for the first year um, for everything. And then I had other goals within that as I kind of researched more. And one of the other things that I did right away was become a member of the AAE. So the whole four years of dental school, um, that was important because I was getting emails, communication, when events were that I could go to to kind of network with other endodontists um, and other program directors. So I thought that was really important too. You guys heard it here. Yes, you should become members of AAE if you are considering endo as part of the thing that you want to do and specialize in for the next 30 or 40 years. Yes, you can do that as a student. Yes, you will do it as a resident. But yes, you need to dive deep into the number one organization that's, that's associated with endodontics. You can't be considered a serious candidate or wanting to do endo if you're not a member or at least uh, have some type of access to membership benefits as a student. Right. So I think that's uh, that's very uh, important. Any other things that you did maybe at your school? I know some schools have what we call externships and internships for dental students that are exploring the specialty programs. Did they have that at, at your school as well? No, they didn't. But what I did was to make a point that once I got into my clinic side of uh, my studies that I became very friendly and with the endodontist on staff, because at our school, we don't have any postgraduate residencies. So I made sure to like, you know, be very friendly with them, pick their brains about what I needed to do, what was their residencies like, even though it was many many years ago, but you know what I needed. And also like, if there's anybody in the area, if I could shadow them and stuff. So, and also previous uh, alumni that had got on to endo programs, if they knew and who I could reach out to. So they were a wealth of knowledge and also, you know, they wrote me very good recommendation letters. So that's also key to always kind of have, um, be on good terms with your specialty <laughs> uh, faculty. Yeah. I mean, they are a resource. And as you're putting together your application or just prior to putting together your application, just exploring the discipline, they are a very vital resource that you've got to tap into, right? Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Cause, cause guess what? Those other five classmates that want to do endo, they've already talked to them probably, or they're not being shy because they understand the importance of right. tapping into that resource, right? And that's going to be helpful. And that's part of the reason why they're there, too. They they have a love for endo or for pedo or for ortho uh, that they want to share. That's part of their duties and responsibilities and why they're there uh, as a professor, as a faculty member, because they like to share information uh, more specifically into the to the specialty. So that's in, important for you to connect with those people. Uh, and also they may have gone to one or two of the programs that you're applying to, or after connecting to, with them, you find out, hey, Tufts or Temple or Case Western or BU, these are 
programs I might want to check out that I maybe didn't have on my list, right? Hey, this is Dr. Darwin, your new dentist coach. Hey, look, it's residency time. It's residency application time. And the biggest question that a lot of people have is how do I prepare my application? So look, if you're struggling in getting your information together, your CV, your personal statement, or you're ready but not prepared for your interviews, reach out to me ASAP, right? Right through my group, Dental Residency Headquarters, we can help you. We can help you get ready for this residency cycle so that you're able to do this. We want you to match, match into residency cycle this this year all right but you got some work to do if you need some help with that application shoot me an email at new dentist coach at gmail.com new dentist coach at gmail.com and through our program called get into dental residency we can help you we can help you but you got to hurry up because residency application is right now it's right now so shoot me an email right now all right let's get back to this episode Next assignment is go to the next video. Go to the next video right now. Go, go, go. Love, peace, and smiles. Go to the next video. Go to the next video.